Yes, today we are beginning on ionization energy. Today we are beginning on ionization energy. Ionization energy. So you have seen from the structure of atoms that protons in the nucleus which are positively charged attract electrons which are negatively charged. And located in energy levels. Therefore, in order to remove electron, we must overcome this force of attraction. We must overcome this force of attraction. So I think that we have seen from the structure of the atoms that protons in the nucleus which are positively charged attract electrons which are negatively charged and located in the energy levels. Therefore, we must overcome this force of attraction. We must overcome this force of attraction. These are force of attraction between the negative charged electrons and the positively charged protons. In other words, we are saying that in other words, we must supply energy to pull off the electrons from now the there is a, 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 an attraction between the electrons and the protons because of the positive charge and negative charge. Remember the negative and the positive charge will always attract. So there is a pool between them. There is a pool between the electrons and the protons. So we must supply energy to pull off the electrons. The energy supplied is called ionization energy. Energy supplied is called ionization energy. The unit for this energy is called joule, which can be converted into kilojoules. So the energy is called ionization energy and the energy is given in joules, it's called joules and which can also be converted into kilojoules. It can also be converted into kilojoules. So there is a pool between the electrons and the protons where the electrons are in the energy levels and the protons are in the nucleus. So there is an attraction between them. In ionization energy, now we define as the ionization energy as the energy required to remove electrons from an atom in gaseous state to produce an ion. To produce an ion. Remember we say that for an ion to be formed, for an ion to be formed, we either lose or gain electrons. So in this case, we are saying that we are overcoming the, the force, the pull between the electron and the proton so that we can form an ion. So that we can form an ion. So we are defining ionization energy as the energy required to remove an electron. So now we are removing an electron from atom in gaseous state to produce an ion. In gaseous state to produce an ion. The equation for the loss of an electron is represented. So we can represent the equation of the loss of an electron or electrons as this. We can represent that loss of electron in this way. So you can see the equation for the loss of an electron is represented as, so we are saying that M is our element. So we are losing electron from this element M to form an ion M positive. So, but it is in gaseous state. It is in gaseous state. That's, that must be taken into consideration it is in its gaseous state. So we are forming an M positive ion and we have here an electron lost. So we are saying that M represents a metal atom. Remember, 
only metals will lose the electrons. We lose the electrons. We lose the electron. The loss of electron will happen in metals. It will happen in metals. The loss of electrons happens in electron. If an atom loses two electrons, the equation, now the only difference becomes that here we'll have a positive two. Here we'll have a positive two, and then the electrons will be two also, the one that lo are being lost. So if the electrons lost are two, we'll represent it in this way. We we'll represent it in this manner. If an elect an atom loses two electrons, the equation is this. So you have the metal in its gaseous state. Then we are now we are losing two electrons. We are losing two electrons from this. We are losing two electrons from the metal atom in its gaseous state. Not the charge on the ion is the same as the number of electron lost. So the charge on the ion is the same as the number of electron lost. Remember, we say that a number of electrons and protons are equal in an atom. They are always equal. If one atom loses three electrons, then the charge will be three positive. The charge will be three positive. The charge will be three positive not the charge on the ion is the same as the number of electrons lost if an atom loses three electrons then the charge will be three positive so you have in we have here an equation of losing that electron from the atom metal atom in its gaseous state losing three electrons now the charge becomes three positive. The charge becomes three positive. Remember, I have said that the ionization energy is the energy required to remove an electron from an atom in its gaseous state. Remember, we are removing now the, the energy, the energy that we are using, we are calling that energy ionization energy. We are calling that energy ionization energy. So having looked at ionization energy, let's look at electron affinity. Electron affinity. Remember, ionization energy happens to those elements that are losing electrons. That are losing electrons. That's why you say that this energy required to remove an electron from atom in its gaseous state. So we have seen that nonmetals gain electrons to gain to to be stable or to gain stability remember that electrons are negatively charged therefore when an an electron tries to enter the outermost energy level it will always it will be repelled by the electrons which are already there remember they are having the same charge they are having the same charge they are all neg negatively charged and uh, because they have the same charge, there will be repulsion. So this happens that uh, they are, we have already negatively charged electrons there, and we are again adding negatively charged electrons. So there will be repulsion. There will be repulsion. There will be repulsion in the outermost energy level. The repulsion comes from the electrons that are already there. They are already occupying the. They are already occupying the electron, the energy level. So you have seen that nonmetals gain electrons, and remember that electrons are negatively charged. Therefore, when an electron tries to enter the outermost energy level, it will be repelled by the electrons which are already there. So, force is required. So, a force, we have a force that is required to put the electrons into the energy level. To put the electrons in the energy level. This force is a form of energy. Remember, we require energy. For us to sit with that, we 
add electrons where there are we have some that are existing and it is a form of energy so this energy is what we are calling electron affinity the energy is what we are calling electron affinity so the energy that we are using so that to see to it that we add electrons where other electrons are is what we are referring to as electron affinity and the ions formed are always negatively charged. Remember, we are adding negative charge of a negatively charged electron into an atom. And remember, this atom had earlier on number of protons and number of electrons that are equal. But in this case now, we are adding the number of electrons which are negatively charged. Let's have let's look at some of examples. Let's look at examples. Let's look at these examples and see. So here we have a chlorine atom. Remember, for chlorine to be stable, it requires one electron. So we are adding an electron to form a stable ion of chlorine. We are adding one electron to form a stable chlorine, chloride ion form a stable chloride ion because we added one negatively charged electron now the charge is negative the charge is negative now the the ion is negatively charged and for and uh, for the case of sulfur sulfur will require two electrons sulfur will require two electrons for it to, to form a stable sulfide ion a stable sulfide ion remember we're adding two electrons which are negatively charged now the sulfide ion is too negative it is negatively charged but now the number of electrons that are added are two that's why you're saying that when we are indicating the symbol of the sulfide ion it is s with a superscript of two negative superscript of two negative now we can define electron affinity as the energy we can define electron affinity as the energy produced when an electron or electrons enters the outer outermost energy level of an atom enters the outermost energy level of an atom so that's all about the ionization energy and electron affinity remember for the metals now for the group one group two group three those are metals group one group two group three those having one electron in the outermost energy level in group one those having two electrons in the outermost energy level group two and those having three electrons in the outermost energy level group three now group one to group three they will exhibit electron they will exp exhibit electron losing now we lose the electron for them to lose an ion now they'll have the ionization energy the ionization energy will be used for the uh, for the electron to be removed from them then for the remaining groups from 4 to 8, we have electron affinity, where we have to add another electron in the outermost, another electron or electrons in the outermost energy level. And this happens, as, the, as this happens, as this happens, so there is a force that we require for us to see to it that these electrons, they are able to be gained by the by the atom so so that a stable ion is formed so that a stable ion is formed let's go further and look at oxidation numbers let's go further and look at oxidation numbers so we mentioned earlier 
mentioned earlier that an atom will gain or lose electron according to the number of electrons in the outermost energy level. So the atom loses or gains electron or electrons according to the number in the outermost energy level. When in the outermost energy level we have, we have one electron, it will lose one electron. When in the outermost energy level we have seven electrons, it will gain one electron for it to be stable. In the process, in the process, the atom becomes an ion. Remember we said after the losing or the gaining of an electron, now the atom becomes an ion. In the process, the atom becomes an ion. The oxidation number of an ion is simply the charge on the ion. It is either positive or negative. Now the charge on the ion is what, is what we call the oxidation number. It's what we call the oxidation number. The charge on the ion. It is either positive or negative. And this, the sign, the negative or the positive, is written before the number. Remember, when you are writing the when you are when we are writing when we are writing the ion, the symbol of the ion. When we are writing the symbol of the ion, remember the negative or the positive side we are indicating after the number. After the number, for example, it's two negative, three negative. So. We indicate it after the number. But for the oxidation number, we indicate it before. We write it before the number. For the oxidation number, we write it before the number. So the oxidation number of an ion is simply the charge on the ion. It's simply the charge on the ion. So positive or negative sign is written before the number, unlike the charge. Unlike the charge. Unlike the charge. So let's. So you have here. Table. Showing iron. And the oxidation number showing ion and the oxidation number. So you have the hydrogen ion, which have an oxidation number of positive one. You have ion of sodium, which has a oxidation number of positive one. You have ion of potassium, oxidation number positive one. You have ion of calcium, which has oxidation number positive two. We have aluminium. Aluminium is three. Sorry, aluminium is three. Aluminium is three. Not two as indicated. Aluminium is positive three. Aluminium is positive three. Chlorine ion it has an oxidation number of negative one. Fluorine ion negative one oxygen ion it is negative two it is negative two so those are some of the oxidation numbers some of the oxidation number remember we are saying that uh, we are saying that the oxidation number the sign positive or negative comes before the number so here we are asking ourselves that why is the oxidation number of hydrogen positive one, yet it's an unmetal. So oh, we are saying that a hydrogen atom loses an electron like a metal. Sometimes, sometimes it will lose an electron like a metal. During other reactions, during other reactions, it gains an electron to achieve the helium electron arrangement or to achieve the to, to become an ion it will either now hydrogen either loses loses or gains an electron to form an ion so sometimes hydrogen atom loses an electron like a metal 
and during other reactions it gains it gains electron to achieve the helium electron arrangement to achieve the helium electron arrangement so that's why we can classify hydrogen either in group 1 or in group 7 because it is in a position to lose one electron and also it's a, it can also gain one electron so it can either be placed in group 1 or group 7 depending on the reaction depending on the type of the reaction so here you have the oxidation number for the first 20 elements have the oxidation numbers for the first 20 elements so you have the periodic table with some common oxidation numbers periodic table with some common oxidation numbers now we say that in group one it will have an oxidation number of positive one group two will have a positive two group three will have positive three positive three group this is group six Remember group 6, it will gain 2, so it have a negative 2. Group 7, it will gain 1, has a negative 1. But group 8, they are all stable, so the oxidation numbers is 0. The oxidation numbers is 0. So those are the common oxidation number for some elements not all the first 20 but only some just uh, some of the elements of the periodic table some elements of the periodic table remember you say that group 8 they are zero because they are already stable they, ne they neither lose nor gain from the periodic table above there are similarity of the oxidation number of the elements that belong to the same group so like group 1 element have oxidation number of positive 1, whereas group 7 have oxidation number of negative 1. Oxidation number of negative 1. So you are saying that the oxidation number is just the charge on the ion. The only difference is that the charge becomes is written before the number and like when writing the unlike right and like when we are writing and like when we are writing the symbol or the ion the symbol of the ion where you indicate the the sign the negative or the positive after the number in the oxidation number, we indicate it before you write this, the sign before the number. For example, when you are writing the aluminium ion, we'll write AL with a superscript of 3 positive. But when you are indicating the oxidation number of aluminium, we are writing a AL as the aluminium atom. Then the aluminium ion will be AL with the superscript of 3 positive but now the oxidation number will be positive 3 you have to note that difference so from the periodic table above there are similarities of the oxidation number of elements that belong to the same group remember elements in the same group have the same number of, of the have the same number have the same oxidation number so those in the group 1, they have oxidation number of positive 1. Whereas those in group 7, they have oxidation number of negative 1. Those in group 2, they have oxidation number of positive 2. Those in group 6, they have 
oxidation number of negative 2 we have oxidation number of negative 2 let's move further and look at valencies let's look at valencies So the number of electron an atom requires to attain the stable noble gas electron arrangement is known as valency or the combining power of the of the group of atoms. So we are saying that the number of electrons an atom requires to attain the stable noble gas electron arrangement is known as valency or combining power of the atom or the group of the atoms. Remember, now the group 8 is what we are calling the noble gases noble gas or the noble gases they are already stable so all the other atoms they tend to attain that stab st stable noble gas electron arrangement like for example we have that that of that of sodium where sodium is 281 atomic number 11 but now it will lose one electron to have the same electron arrangement as the neon, which is an atomic number 10 that has electron arrangement of 28. So all the atoms they are, they are coming, they, they, they require to attain the stable, the stable noble gas electron arrangement. So they will either lose or gain an electron or electrons. So I think that the valencies, valency, the number of electrons an atom require to attain the stable gas electron arrangement the number of electrons the number of electrons an atom require to attain the stable noble gas electron arrangement is what we are calling the valence or we can simply define it as combining power of, of the atom or group of atoms. Of atom or group of group of atoms. A group of atoms, a group of atoms which occur in compounds, a group of atoms which occur in compounds but cannot exist on its own is called a radical. Now we have other groups of atoms that will occur in groups. But it cannot, but cannot exist on its own. We are calling it as a radical. We are calling them as radical. A radical. We have example of sulfate. We have example of sulfate. Hydroxide. Sulfate. Hydroxide. Carbonate. So you have a number of exam a number of examples. You have a number of examples. So they they are in group a group of atoms which are kind of compound but cannot exist in it on its own is called a radical. For example, you have sulfate, have hydroxide, have carbonate, have phosphate. And so on and so forth. So they occur in groups. They occur in groups. The oxidation number has a negative or positive sign, unlike valence, which does not have. Now, the valency has no sign. The valency has no sign we say the oxidation number it will either have positive or negative before before the number but for the valency it does not have does not have what a sign of negative or positive So in metals, the valence is just the number of electrons in the outermost energy level. Because remember, the valency in, in, in metals is what we are losing. 
the electrons in the outermost energy is what, is what we are losing. Now, that number of electrons in the outermost energy level is what we are calling the valency for the case of metals. It's what we call valency for the case of metal. But for the case of nonmetals, we just have the number of electrons in the outermost energy level subtracted from 8. Subtracted from 8. We get the number of valence. Get the number of valence. Or we get the valence. The valence number. The valence number. So you are saying that you are saying that in metals you are saying that in metals the valence is just the number of electrons in the outermost energy level and for nonmetals just the difference between group 8 and the, the group number of the elements e.d. the valence of oxygen the valence of oxygen is 6 subtracted from 8 we have 2 the valence of phosphorus is 5 subtracted from 8. So we take 8. We take the number of the electrons in the outermost energy level subtracted from 8. We get the valency for the non metals. We get the valency for the non metals. And now and for the metals, we just take the number in the outermost energy level. So it becomes. So it becomes the, the valency number. So let's look at the valencies of the first 20 elements of the periodic table. Let's look at the valencies of the first 20 elements of periodic table. Valencies. Valencies of the first 20 elements of the periodic table. So here you have them. So here you have them. Where you have the atomic number, the element itself, the symbol, the electron arrangement. So to gain the stability of a noble gas atom, atoms, gain or lose electron. Now then we have the, the valence. Then you have the valence. For hydrogen, it's one. Remember, we say that for it to be stable, it can either lose or gain one electron. So it only requires one electron. It only requires one electron. It only requires one electron. So that has a valence one. Helium is already stable. Zero. Lithium, one. Beryllium, two. Boron, three. Carbon, four. Carbon 4, nitrogen 3, oxygen 2, fluorine 1, neon is already stable, that's 0, sodium is 1, magnesium is 2, aluminium 3, silicon is 4, silicon 4, phosphorus is 3 or 5. So phosphorus is either 3 or 5 because so now phosphorus it can either gain three electrons. So phosphorus, it is either three or five. So it depends with the isotope that is being used. It depends with the isotope. Now sulfur, it is two, it is two. Chlorine is one. Argon is already stable. Potassium, one. Calcium, two. Calcium is two. So that's a table for the first 20 elements and the valency number. And the valency number. And the valency number. So, when you look at in, it in the periodic table, you'll see that for the group 1, it's valency. They all have a valency of 1. Group 2 have a valence of 2. Group 3, valence of 3. Group 4, valence of 4. Group 5 has 3. But for phosphorus, has 3 and 5, depending on the, on the isotope that is used. For 6, for group 6, it is 2, 7, 1, 
8 is 0 because it's already stable because it is already stable so you have valences for the first 20 elements now here we are uh, presenting them in a form in the periodic table here now it is in the periodic table just the way it will look when it is in the periodic table when it is in the periodic table when in the periodic table so that's group one group two group three group four group five group six group seven and uh, finally have group eight finally you have group eight not the valency correspond to the group number of metals for only metal and for non metal subtract group number from eight subtract group number from eight subtract the group number from eight subtract the group number from eight the valency correspond to the group number for metals only for metals but for non metals so for metals from group one to group three non metals group four to group eight but you have to keep in mind that group eight already stable so it's group four to group seven group four to group seven group one up to group seven it's what we'll have the valency number now the group eight is always zero because they are already stable now here you have now the valency number for different for different metals for different metals for different metals here so we have zinc with the symbol have zinc you have lead have zinc you have iron you have tin you have lead you have copper you have silver you have barrier so for the zinc is two iron it depends with the one being used it's either two or three tin it's either two or four copper uh, sorry lead it is either two or four copper is either one or two barium is one silver barium, barium is two silver is one no those are some of the element some of the metals and the valency now let's look at the radicals we remember we say that we have some compounds that are have some atoms that are will be in groups they are in groups and uh, them being in groups they also have the valency number have the valency number so here they are here they are we can look at them and see you can look at them and see so you have a radical you have the formula then we have the valence. Now we have ammonium, we have hydro hydroxide, have the nitrate, have the chloride, have the hydrogen carbonate, have the hydrogen sulfate. So those ones have valency one. We have carbonate, sulfate, sulfite, those have valence two. Then for the three, we have only phosphate, we have phosphate. We have phosphate. Those are some of the common radicals, the valency number. 
So we already mentioned that valence is the combining power of an element or radical. Now it is element or radical. So the valency, it is valency, it's the combining power of an element or radical. However, some elements have varying valences, as you have seen, they have varying valences. For example, we have, we have, we have copper, we had copper with a valence of one or two. We had phosphate, phosphorus with a valency of three or five. The valences are of the elements are indicated in Roman numbers. In Roman numbers, So that's, that has to be taken into consideration. Remember, the valences of elements are indicated in Roman numbers. In brackets after naming of the element when naming the compound. When naming the compound. So, for example, we have copper 2 sulfate copper 2 sulfate now the 2 is written in roman number copper 2 sulfate the 2 is written in roman number though so that means that the copper we are using has a valency of 2 has a valence of 2 that's a very important point to note that's a very important point to note so that is used when naming the compound. When naming the compound. Get it very clearly that that is when naming the compound. When naming compound. For example, in a reaction, we are, you, you are writing the reaction, a wadi equation. Now it is a wadi equation. So, for example, copper, 2 sulfate, the 2 is in, we indicate it in Roman number. So, we already mentioned that the valence is the combining power of an element or radical. However, some elements have varying valences. For example, we said copper as a valence of 1 or 2, phosphorus as a valence of 3 or 5, as a valence of 3. Or five and the valences of the elements are indicated in Roman numbers in bracket after the name of the element when naming the compound. Now, after the reaction, for example, in writing a word, a word equation, we'll have the product. We'll have the product. Then, when writing the product, that compound now that is formed. When writing the compound that is formed, remember in bracket, for example, in copper, because copper has varying valency and many more, so it's either copper 2 sulfate or copper 1, depending on the one that has been used. So indicate the 2 or the 1 in Roman numbers and in bracket. So let's look at the valences of elements in compound. Valences of elements in compound. Valences of elements in compounds. Valences of elements in compounds. We have a table here. So you have copper one oxide. Now the element here is copper. And because it said it's copper 1, so now the valency is 1. The valency is 1. We have copper 2 oxide. Now the valency is 2. Remember we say that we have elements. We have some that have very valency. We have ion 2 sulfate. Now the ion is the valency is 2. Ion 3 chloride. The ion is 3. Sulfur 4 oxide. The sulfur is 4. Sulfur 6 oxide. Sulfur is 6. Carbon 4 oxide. The carbon 
is 4, carbon 2 oxide, the carbon is 2. The carbon is 2. So those are the 